So just for the purposes of this recording, um, we've explained to the participants that this uh, seminar is being recorded and uh, participants have had the option to um, just to blank their webcams or switch off if they wish. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and um, and you'll see that and I think that's going to be what is actually recorded but this is a bit of a uh, an experiment of course just to see how this goes. It's our first time. So we'll get going right away and let's um, share my screen. Okay, um, now you should see my slide. If anybody can't see it, feel free to put a message in the chat. Let's make sure I can see everybody still. Um, I'll just make sure I can see the chat as well. Yeah, um, if everyone can see the, um, the screen, just put a one in the chat or, or, or something in the chat so, we, so I know you can see it all. Right, um, so uh, there's brilliant. Thanks, sir. Right, so I want to present you um, and talk to you a little bit about what is in the service and what you access you can get from your GP surgery um, and some new developments that are happening. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm Tim Allardyce and I am a uh, physiotherapist um, and osteopath. And I've put a photo up here from my time in London at London Olympics because it was Olympic day yesterday. And, um, and uh, so I thought, well, let's go with an Olympic theme. Um, now, there's been some big changes in GP uh, land um, and some of those GP changes involve your GP practice. So we've got three practices here today. Keston Medical Practice, the Moines Practice and Parkside Group Practice. Now one of those changes is a national directive towards um, a new workforce called First Contact Practitioners. Now what that is, is it's a physiotherapy service um, that is available at your GP surgery that you don't need to see your GP first for. So it's not a rehabilitation service that will be done by another provider within Croydon that has absolutely nothing to do with us. So the community physio is absolutely not us, um, but we can provide a first point of contact physio assessment and, um, and guidance and exercise service. So the idea behind this is part of the um, plans for the government to um, reduce the amount of pressure on GPs. And the idea being that if you've got joint pains, neck pain, back pain, elbow pain, wrist pain, finger pain, back pain, knee pain, hip pain, post hip operations, post knee replacements, um, any kind of joint pain, sports injury, you can go and see your first contact practitioner first. Um, now, if we need to um, get some medication, we can speak to a GT doctor, but in most cases we can prescribe exercises and advice and guidance and tell you a bit more about your injury and whether it's serious or not or whether it's going to recover with time or whether you need any additional help. If we do need additional help, we can refer you for x-ray. We can refer you um, into the system for an MRI scan. We can refer you into the system for uh, to see a consultant. Uh, that all goes through the current MSK providers, musculoskeletal providers in Croydon, which is not us, um, And but we can make that referral. Uh, we can... Um, um, we can... Uh, refer you for blood tests we can uh, send you for an x-ray um, and so we can do quite a lot of things we can write a write a fit note which can be signed by your gp um, as well uh, so first contact practitioners are being rolled out nationally and your very forward-thinking gp practice said yes we would like this in our surgery so let's bring these guys in and let's provide the service uh, it's not designed to replace a community physio service so it will Physio is separate to, to first contact practitioner. We can refer into the physio service uh, where you can get more closely supported rehabilitation. Um, we're currently available twice a week, but that is going to increase to full time once COVID ends. Um, also available in your GP surgery is link workers. Now, link working is something that we provide, not, not in this particular PCN, but I wanted to bring it in because link workers are an amazing resource. And that you can use if you have any sort of problem, whether it's financial um, pain, uh, chronic pain, um, uh, you need some support with food deliveries, or if you're stuck at home at the moment, there's a lot of people still uh, isolating. And if you are 
in trouble, you need help, then you can contact your surgeon, ask them to put you in touch with the link worker. So let's talk about back pain. Well, I mean, it's, yeah, I, I'm sure my dear mother won't mind me saying, but my mother um, spoke to me over on Friday night. She said, Tim, um, you're not going to believe it, but I've got really bad sciatica. She's been social isolating. She's 70 years old. She's been social, social isolating for the last three months. Um, I've been talking to her through a window. And this is just um, classic for people that are getting back problems and sciaticas. Um, due to inactivity and being stuck at home. Um, back pain is, is anyway, it's really, really common. And, you know, it, it's such a debilitating problem. I've suffered with back pain myself. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a real nightmare. And almost everybody at some point will suffer back pain at some point in their, in, in their, um, in their life. So there's lots of things we can do for back pain and lots of things we can recommend. Um, when it comes to back pain, we know, uh, it, you, the big thing is we want to try and prevent it. So we want to prevent people actually getting back pain to start with or prevent the problem. You know, and a lot of this comes down to posture and about muscular strength and about mobility. You know, if we keep the back mobile and we keep the back strong and we are fit, then generally speaking, we're going to likely have less problems. You know, if we're constantly bending, like we do as physios, um, if you're constantly leaning forwards, where, you know, where, where the center of gravity is putting a lot of pressure through your spine, um, if you're constantly lifting, but with bad technique, then there's a real risk that you're going to get back problems at some point. And so, you know, a lot of back pain can be prevented, you know, with just good advice, good good management, looking after yourself, you know, and, and it's, it's, I know this sounds like common sense but really it really really is true yeah you know, if you can just um keep your back exercised with, with with you know groups like pilates groups and yoga groups and you can do home exercise to keep your back strong and you do stretching for your back then and, and you look after your back then a lot of times back problems disappear or they're really well managed and the problem we have is, you know, we're all busy people and we all sit at computers and we're all in lockdown and we're not getting out as much as we should and we're not exercising as much as we should and so we're getting back problems. Um, and so we have to try and fight that challenge and, and, and try and work out um, how to prevent our own back pain. So a lot of times back pain is caused by the things that we do to it. Yeah, so we need to be alert and say, look, let's look at what we're doing for our back. I and mean, what is it that we're doing that's putting pressure for our back? You know, are we bending a lot? Are we lifting a lot? Are we stuck in our chair a lot? Are we um, working in a, a, at a workstation that's not particularly conducive to our leg position? Um, what are we doing that's aggravating us? And let's stop the aggravating factors. Uh, now, if you get pain, things you can do before you start going down the lines of cocodamol and ibuprofen and naproxen, you know, all these medications, which, you know, we... We only want to take if we really really need to you know things you can do is like apply ice or heat to the back you know apply an ice and heat 10 minutes wrap it in a tea towel you know obviously don't risk getting a burn on your back but wrap it in a tea towel let's let's get some heat or ice to the area that can really help and get mobile you know start moving the back is designed to move it's designed to have all these moving joints in it you know when the back gets stiff it tends to get painful so if we get moving and we start exercising, then things can help. You know, losing weight again is is, is super important. Let's let's reduce our weight. Let's um, let, let's get fitter. Let's get stronger. And what exercise can we do for our back? Well, I mean, there's there's hundreds of exercises you can do for your back. But specific ones, if you're suffering back pain right now, you know, these three exercises are ideal. You know, lying on your back, just gently bend your knees to each side. Okay, running your arm down the left hand and right hand side of your back will improve the amount of side flexion on your spine, so it improves the mobility and the rotation exercise. So just reaching over your shoulder, touching the back of a chair. You know, you can do it sitting in your chair if you're getting stiff in your chair, if you're working long hours, you can just reach around, touch the back of the chair and mobilize your back. So just a simple exercise like this. You can you can do these exercises five or ten times each side, do them two or three times a day, it will take you less than five minutes a day but can make a big difference to getting that back moving we see a lot of problems with neck pain as well i mean neck pain is also incredibly common 
um, and you can go and see a first contact practitioner if you're suffering with neck pain. If you've had a car accident, you know, and a whiplash, you can go and see your first contact practitioner. If you're getting muscle aching, but just won't go away, go and see your FCP. And then the sorts of things we will look at is things like, what are the, again, what are the causative factors? What things are putting pressure through your neck, which is aggravating your neck? Is it a computer setup? Now, the big thing that I see all the time is people that use laptops. Laptops are neck killers. If you're using a laptop at home and you haven't got neck pain, post in here and let me know because I, I, I've used a laptop for years and every time I use my laptop, I get neck ache. Um, and, if, and I don't use a laptop very often. So it's such a cause of problem because you're constantly leaning your head forward. So the weight of the head is, is meaning the muscles have to support an, an additional weight on your head because gravity is, is acting like a, a lever, a lever arm. So you're actually, your muscles are having to work super hard to support the weight of your head. So if you can just reduce the amount of forward neck bending, it can make a, a huge difference. Neck pain exercises. And, and of course you can, you, you can use the ice and heat as, as well to reduce any inflammation neck pain exercises uh, like the back and the neck does respond very very well to gentle mobility exercises so gently turning it i mean we often say it's a bit like a radar you know when, when a body can be straight you can like a bit like an hour you can sort of turn the neck to a up to 90 degrees of rotation and that can that's like a, a brilliant way to do have your sense organs being adaptive to your environment so it's a brilliant evolutionary tool that we have in our necks to be able to turn our necks quickly and um, so the neck loves mobility it loves to be kept mobile you know and, and 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 it hates it hates repeated forward neck bending and this is why phones and laptops and tablets are a nightmare for necks um because it hates being stuck in this forward bent position so simple exercise you can do and um, now the rotation exercise the first image you can see is just a way to turn your neck left and right to maintain mobility in the neck do it 10 times two or three times a day it'll take you two minutes a day uh, and that will mobilize your neck the side bend exercise is a way to improve side flexion in your neck so it helps the, the vertebra bend left and right i uh, just simply take the ear down to the down to the shoulder and that will mobilize your neck do it five to ten times each side it's a very gentle exercise. Um, and then the neck retraction, it's like the physio's favorite exercise for the neck. It's simply a way to bring the neck back a bit. So to challenge the neck to go into extension, especially because we spend a lot of our time with our heads poked forwards. So bringing it back just a little bit is, is a good exercise to practice, um, to practice to get into good postural positions. So the neck retraction exercise, I mean, typically we would do that sort of 10 times and, uh, and, and, and we'd repeat that, you know, 10 repetitions maybe once or twice a day now one of the really important things when it comes to back and neck pain is posture you know it, so many people have bad posture it's unreal um whether you're a young person who slouches all day whether you're uh someone who works in an office sitting slouched whether you are an older person who um has, has lost a little bit of balance and, and, and you're stooping forwards you know there's lots of reasons why you might have bad posture and it, i cannot stress enough how important posture is as we get older posture is even more important because gravity will have a effect on bringing your ha your, your body forward so it bends you forwards it's almost like sort of a flower eventually sort of rounds forwards uh, as gravity beats it you know and so it, maintaining good posture is so important for spinal health and neck health and things you can do like extension based exercise things like just bringing the shoulders back you know lifting your arms above your head uh the climb the rope exercise uh, anything really where you're avoiding forward bending and st standing up straight whether it's lifting the chin whether it's bringing the arms back whether it's drawing the shoulder blades together these are kind of posture exercises so they stop you stooping forwards and they just open up the, the, the chest you know and it brings you back into alignment so it brings you back into the center of gravity and in a center of gravity position this is where the force of gravity has the least effect on you when you're outside of your center of gravity 
you know, like bending forwards, then gravity has a bigger effect on you. So, so, so this is like a weight that pushes through your body and this causes a compressive effect on your body. So maintaining good posture, you know, extending, you could be chair-based, it doesn't matter, you could be standing. If you're chair-based, there's exercise you can do to improve your posture. And looking holistically, you know, weight loss, you know, especially at the moment with COVID, is just so important. Um, it's I, when I, we we were we were posting some of our physio team to various hospitals, and um, myself and one of my physios will um, were at one point looking like we were going to be posted up to Nightingale. So we did the training, and it was thirty five patients uh, were in Nightingale, and all of them had diabetes and were obese. Um, and you know, it's it's such a big factor for all health conditions, and I I'm so passionate about weight loss as a method of improving all your health problems you know everything seems to get better when you lose weight for, for, for joint pains obviously you'll, you'll be carrying less weight so it's less pressure on the body you know just going to the shops to walk if, you, if, if you're overweight then then it's it's a big effect on the back and the legs if, if you if you have less weight then it's so much easier for the body to move um and weight also has an effect on on the circulation so with, with regards to the feet and the hands it has an effect on the cardiovascular system has effect on our breathing it has effect on on so many physiological processes in the body um and so we just really want to drive towards weight loss and it makes such a difference and and weight loss that's well that's really all all down to two things you know if you want to lose weight eat less and exercise more it's as simple as that. You know, you don't need fad diets. You don't need nutritional shakes. You don't need to starve yourself. Uh, you know, you just need to eat a little bit less and exercise a little bit more. You'll put less calories in. You'll burn more calories. Less calories in, more calories burned means weight loss. And it just makes a difference to everything from sleep to health to back pain to neck pain. Um, and we just can't recommend enough just exercising you know it's so important get exercising i know it's hard at the moment it is hard but on these good days get yourself outside you know get some vitamin d from the sun that can make a huge difference for joint pain get walking use this good weather as an opportunity to to walk around and and get out the government are now allowing us to exercise through the day um, and they want us to exercise it's great for our mental health as well um, and health problems improve when we exercise is what the body likes to do the body is designed to be fit to exercise and so this is where if i can really try to inspire or encourage you you know let's get our bodies moving and let's get exercising well if you guys uh, need us you know we're at your gp surgery and um we're a pretty relaxed bunch of guys, uh, guys and girls, and um, we're here to have, happy to help if there's any problems. Um, I'm going to open it up now to, for any questions. Um, please don't share any personal information with me, but if you want to talk about your back problem or neck problem or you want some advice, then I'm all ears. Um, so you're welcome to unmute yourself, and I'm going to open up any questions now. Hi, Tim. Uh, my name is Jason. Um, hi Jason. Hi Tim. I've got um, a problem at the moment where I'm getting. Uh, I I was um, doing some uh, some weight activities about a month ago, and um, I felt like a shooting pain down my back, um, and then that sort of manifested itself in like a, a tingling sensation down my down my uh, left leg, which is like stayed as like a sort of numbing a numb sensation, um, and now it's actually. Uh, gone a step further and I've actually started getting pins and needles uh, again down my left side on my left arm and left hand is, is that something to be worried about um so in 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 a nutshell first of all I, I need to, I would need to just double check and the first thing we want to double check is have you had any numbness around your back passage any loss of sexual function any incontinence anything like that they're the really nasty things we want to kind of rule out and they're the red flags yeah, no, no, none of those things. So you don't need to be initially alarmed or initially concerned. 
it's certainly the symptoms down your leg. Are they, are they down the back of the leg? Do they go down the back? Do they uh, go down the front? Down, down the outside of, yeah. of the leg more and then down to my foot and then my foot it's pretty much uh, across like the whole of the foot. Yeah, now that sounds very, very much like it could be could be sciatica. Okay, um, and um, so sciatica is very, very common. In most cases, it's it is a problem, yes, but it's not a medical, you know, a, a, a you need to have surgery type problem at this stage. You know, or you need, don't need to be massively alarmed. Um, but there's a lot of things you can do to address it. Um, now, with regards to pins and needles in the hands, that's unlikely to be the same issue. So um, if you trap a nerve in your back, then the symptoms will go down the leg. But the, the nerve to the, to the hand is different. So you, you'd, that may be something completely different. Um, often that's if you sleep in a funny angle, you'll notice that you can, your arm can go numb. Or if you have a bad postural position, sometimes your hand can go a bit numb. But if we park that for one side and let's look at the back and the leg. Um, so the first thing to do, and I always say this to all my sciatic patients, assuming this is sciatica, which we, which we will assume at the moment is because that's the most common cause of symptoms into the leg from the back. Um, and, and the most common cause of that is usually a disc bulge. So when the discs between the spine bulge, so you have these pads between the disc and they, they help cushion the vertebra and cushion um, from force. And when these discs bulge, then they can press on the nerve and typically that's the sciatic nerve. Now, um, the first thing I say to my patients is avoid as much forward bending as possible. Okay, so when you get symptoms into the leg, they're usually made worse on bending um, and they ease up over a period of weeks when you stop bending or minimize bending. I'm not saying stop bending for the rest of your life, but just minimize it. Okay, if you're bending 50 times a day, reduce it to 10 times a day. Let's see if things improve because usually things will improve because you're taking the load off the back. Okay, that takes the pressure off the disc. If you take the pressure off the disc, it takes the pressure off the nerve. So it reduces the symptoms going into the leg. Right, yeah. second thing to do, you can do those three exercises which I've mentioned. So these are very safe for disc problems. So the rotation, the, um, the, the side flexion, and the chair rotation. Um, so you want to mobilize the back. We want you to get moving. You can walk. If you've got sciatica, one of the best things to do is get walking or you can cycle. Okay, yeah. swimming is also an option, but obviously not at the moment because leisure centers are not open. Um, but swimming and uh, but cycling and, and, and walking is good. Now, if you feel that this warrants, and, and, and it may well do, if you feel like, do you know what, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere with this, um, and I, I feel like my symptoms are either progressing or, or not getting better, um, you can certainly book an appointment with your FCP. Okay, and your FCP will probably refer you to community physio. Um, and that, that, as I said at the beginning, that's not our service, but we will give you advice. We'll look at your back. We can screen you. We can clear you for anything more serious. Now, if after a period of weeks and, and months and that things are certainly if they're getting much worse, then, then, then you need to be reviewed f um, usually by an orthopedic surgeon or an orthopedics team. So if your symptoms in your leg get, get much worse, you need to, you need to contact the, your, your FCP or GP. And we'll, you know, we'll make those referrals. Um, and usually what happens at that point is you'd get an MRI scan. So an MRI is like a, like a, like a, a, a smart x-ray, but without radiation that can show discs and joints in your back. They can't be, you can't be referred directly by your GP. So GPs cannot go, you need a scan, I'm going to send you for a scan because that pathway does not exist in Croydon. So what we do, what they do is we do a referral to the MSK team. Um, and then they will then refer you on for those investigations. Okay. Now, if physio is not working, then the next step would probably be something like an epidural. Okay. So do an ep epidural, which is an injection in the spine, and that can help reduce inflammation and pain. So there's lots of routes. So the first route would be to try exercises, get advice from the FCP. And then if things don't improve, then of course you go back to your FCP or we refer you to community physio. That's great. That's lovely. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> does, that, does that answer it? Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. So try these exercises first. Offload your spine, reduce forward bending. That's brilliant. Okay, great. If it Thanks, doesn't Tim. start improving, phone GP surgery, book an FCP appointment. At the moment, it's telephone, obviously, because of face-to-face -face issues. Yeah, but we're, we're opening up face-to-face. -face, you know, we're starting to open up fairly soon. 
Um, I don't know exactly when, but, but GP started, surgeries are starting to do it again. But we can do a video call with you. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you. Real. Is there any other questions? Anybody else? Tim. Uh, hi, it's uh, Adam here. Hello, Adam. Hi there. I, I've got one. So I started to experience um, lower back pain. It's not, um, it's not quite as advanced as anything like um, Jason's. But I, what I was just wondering is I, I like lots of people and working from home all day, every day now at the moment. Um, and I, I don't have a, I'm normally fairly conscious about posture because I've had RSI issues in the past, but I, I don't have like a, like a snazzy office chair or anything. Um, so I just sort of wondering, I've been reading all sorts of articles about what's best for your back and stuff. Is it, I mean, I'm not expecting you to specify products, but is it worth investing in like a decent office chair with all the lumbar support and stuff like that? Do you know what, right? Um, so I get asked this a lot and it's really hard to say because no one chair will suit one back. And that's why a lot of them have these um, uh, things you can change the, the position and change the number support, etc. cetera. Um, so one thing that happened about seven or eight years ago was um, one of my dear secretaries called Penny. She was an amazing lady. She started getting some back pain and she said to me, um, I think I need a new chair. So I said to Penny and, and, and our other admin, please, could you go into Staples at the time in Croydon? They've unfortunately now shut. And can you sit on every single chair in Staples, all the office chairs, and I'll buy you any of those chairs that you want. Okay. And they both came back with the same chair. And I'll show you what that chair was. I think it was called an operator chair. And this was the chair they liked the most. Now, you can get one with arms and they're super comfortable um, it's 70 odd quid so if it doesn't work you know then yeah 70 quid and clean but if it doesn't work then you know it's not a massive problem because you can spend easily six seven eight nine hundred pounds to fifteen hundred pounds on a really fancy ergonomic chair uh, yes that's what i've seen yeah yeah i mean they are there but if the, if it doesn't suit your back and you don't find it comfortable you've got a bit of a problem Whereas these are pretty good, they're you know they're they're pretty entry level. They've got lots of uh, adjustments. They suit a lot of backs. Um, we have them in all of our clinics um, for our admin team, and some of our physios use them as well. Um, and th they're a pretty good good bet. You can see my screen, right? You can see the chair on it. Yes, I can. Yes, yeah, yeah that's fantastic. Thanks. Um, that's one option. Um, now best thing is really is to try chairs so i don't know where you find them these days um staples used to do them, but um you find somewhere where you can go in and sit on a few chairs because if you sit on like 10 chairs you'll straight away know what feels comfortable you'll be like oh that one feels comfy oh that one doesn't feel comfy and the best thing is to try it and then you'll see what works for you but the best thing of course is to get up regularly so we also say to people don't sit for 30 minutes and get up and move yeah, I've even been resorting to just putting, a, I've got both a desktop and a laptop. So putting, grabbing the laptop and putting on a chest of drawers and just standing up, a tall chest of drawers and just, you know. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, we've we just been asked to quote for um, a women's magazine about a standing um, desk that, um, an, an attachment onto a desk that makes it into a standing desk. So there's lots of them around now to help adjust between a sitting and a standing desk and they're really good um so that can really really help that's brilliant thank you so much that's that's really good advice thank you no no worries um any more questions probably give it a couple more minutes um so i've got a question on the chat um what can i do for numbness down the arm and pain it hurts at night mostly so when people get numbness down the arm um, especially when it happens at night, the most common cause of the arm going numb at night is usually sleeping in a position which um, causes the arm to go a little bit dead. So you've all had that sensation where you wake up in the middle of the night and you lift your arm up because it's not your arm. That's usually because you've slept on it in a funny angle and it just creates a, 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 um, a what we call it, a sort of a, a short-term nerve palsy or a neuropraxia which helps it which, which means the arm goes a bit numb now if the, if it's happening during the day as well um then the most common cause of numbness going down the arm is usually 
um, a disc problem in the neck. So when a disc bulges, it can pinch a nerve and it can send pain or numbness down, down, down the arm. Um, and very similar to the back, actually, the neck is best looked after by keeping it in a central position so not letting the head drop forwards so first thing i'd say to this lady that's asked me this question is is check whether if you bend your neck forwards does your symptoms in your arm get worse and if that's the case avoid repeated neck bending so laptops phones tablets um walking along looking at the ground um gardening things like that be mindful be careful of repeated forward neck bending and that can stop a lot of nerve pain going down the arms um, and there's lots and lots of exercises you can do. Um, the, the gentle exercise that I showed here, these two first two exercises are really good. Um, now, if you find when you tilt your neck back, you also get pain down the arm, you want to actually avoid this third exercise for now till you get advice. But just rotation and side bending exercises are good. Um, and of course, you can see um, physios for, for manual therapy and hands-on therapy, and that can really help. So we can do massage around the around the neck and stretching techniques and give you more advice any more questions uh yeah so i've had a question on chat so uh yes thanks thanks uh, to the person that just posted that last question right so can you advise a good mattress for neck and back problems i suffer from slip disc and uh, in my neck and my lower back is also really painful every now and again causing balance issues and stiffness and pain which subsides after some days and then reoccurs. I use a spring mattress at the moment, but wanted to change to suit my current problems. Um, yeah, I get asked a lot about mattresses and in the same way that I've mentioned to Adam about chairs, I'll say the same thing about mattresses. So no one mattress will suit one particular back. And it's really um, very much an individual um, thing about mattresses, okay? Because some people like them firm, some people like them soft, some people like water-based ones, some people like um, bamboo-based ones, some people like temper memory foams, um, and some people just like sprung mattresses. And it really depends on what you find comfortable. Now, a good thing is, is you can walk into any dreams, even, you don't even have to take your shoes off, and you can lie on any mattress. And I've done this, so me and my partner actually went into dreams in Bromley, and we laid on about, it must have been 15, maybe 20 mattresses. And it's amazing because you can see really quickly um, what feels comfortable. And, you, you know, I said to Kay, don't even worry about the price. Let's first of all, just work out what feels comfortable for your back and my back. Um, now, if you're not sure, typically don't go for one that's too hard. Don't go for one that's too soft. Go for something in the middle. Um, I love um, memory foams, although some people report they can be quite hot in the evening. If you've got an old mattress, you could certainly look at a topper, like a memory foam topper. That's a, a really cost-effective way to... Um, that's a really cost-effective way just to try um, something a bit different. So they're not expensive. You can just get a topper mattress on your, um, uh, on your bed, okay? And, and you can try that. And that can help with old mattresses. Um, one thing I would say is investing in a, in a good mattress is usually a good investment because we spend so long um, in bed. Uh, and um, so the best thing you can do is go into a dreams, try out a load of mattresses, and you'll quickly find what feels comfortable. Okay, next question. Um, is neck crepitus worrying? Well, neck crepitus is clicking or crunching in the neck. And no, it's not worrying. So it sounds horrendous, but most necks click and crack in fact virtually every neck clicks and cracks it's normal when you rotate your neck um it clicks and cracks the thing is people don't notice it until they get pain in the neck when they get pain they start being aware of the neck cracking but actually in most cases the neck was cracking already you see any mobile joint cracks when you bend down to squat you'll notice your knees will crack when you lift your shoulder above your head often you'll notice your shoulder will click and clunk when you turn your neck to the side you'll often notice it scrunches and crunches it's normal for a joint is it worrying no it's not um only if it's accompanied with pain should you be concerned it's a very normal sign any more questions good um just maybe one last question 
Um, so the question is, is can sitting on divans be good for the back or are sofas the better option? Um, I'm just not entirely sure exactly what a divan is. Um, so I'll just have a quick look. Uh, hmm. All right, okay. Um, well, I think about um, about sofas. I mean, I don't I don't personally find sofas particularly comfortable. Uh, I find I end up slouching on them, and then within quite a short period of time, I get neck and backache. So I try and avoid them. Um, I prefer to be sitting more upright in a chair. Um, you know, if you're lying down on your side, I, you know what? The best thing to do is just change position regularly. If you want to sit on a sofa all evening and you're comfortable doing that, fine. For me, I couldn't do that. I'll just get aching back and aching neck, so I have to get up and move around. Um, I would say, you know, just whether you use one of his, uh, you know, a divan or whether you use a, a sofa, um, you know, just get up and regularly move around. Great. Uh, any other op uh, Any other questions? Good. My pleasure. Thank you. Um, well, guys, it's been um, really nice to sort of remotely meet you. I hope this has been useful. Um, and um, you know what? Just like good luck out there. Uh, enjoy the good weather. Uh, enjoy life. Have fun. And um, give, give my team a call via your GP surgery if you need to. All right. Take care and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. Thanks a lot.